Hello, uh, welcome to the Empire of Dirt workshop. Today uh, I'm going to be going through this uh, Olympus objective. It's an A40 and uh, it's a nice little objective. It's uh, got all the paints intact. It's in, it's in good shape. The only problem with it is the uh, spring uh, loaded retractable tip here is a little bit stubborn. It takes a lot of force to break it loose. Once it breaks loose it moves fairly well but if you let it set for five or ten minutes it'll get stiff again. So we're going to go through that. Uh, going to make this good. Once that's done, this will be a nice objective that can be used. Okay, uh, I have here a couple of the tools we're going to use to work on this uh, objective. Basically, all I have is a very fine-tipped uh, flat-bladed screwdriver, a, a nice uh, precision cross-point screwdriver. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. Let's try this. There you go. And I have here a little rubber rubber pad, and you'll see what that's for in just a bit. First thing I want to do on this thing is we're going to take this little rubber, rubber grip ring off of here. It's just a little knurled rubber ring, and that has to come off because there's a little cross point screw underneath there, a little JIS type screw. But the way I take that off is I take this screwdriver, it's a very a very small bladed, and what I do is I, being careful not to damage anything in the process, but I just slip it under there, just like that. Once I have that going, then I go around with my thumb here, just press that loose, press that off, all the way around. You have to be very careful of these because this ring, this rubber ring is, well, like 30, 40 years old. And, you know, it's not going to take a lot before it'll stretch at the minimum or actually come apart. So, I'll take this off now. It's out of the slot that it was in, as you can see here. But I'm going to go ahead and take it all the way off. Just if nothing else so you can see it. Like I said, be very careful with it so as not to stretch it. This is a little bit dirty too, it's going to need to be cleaned up a little bit before it goes back on. But there you go. This is uh, this is what's under it. There's a little, very little cross, very small cross point screw right there. Okay, uh, so now the ring is removed. So the next step, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this little black field stop. Uh, underneath this field stop here is a, a spring, and that's the spring that's used in this mechanism here. So to take that off, basically this thing just unscrews from here, but it's really hard to get a grip on that. Sometimes you can just push on it. Um, what I tend to try first is just this little rubber pad here. It's like a grippy rubber pad, and if I just lay the black surface here onto that, push down rather hard, and turn it, Yeah, that actually did work. It loosens this up a little bit to the point where I can now grip it. And uh, you have to be careful because there is a spring underneath this. Okay. So here's the spring. Here's the cap. Set those aside. Uh, the last thing we have to do to take this thing apart is to take out that little cross point screw that holds it together. And it's right there. Come in with this little screwdriver, uh, if you're curious. It's a uh, Weha Viha 261 PH00-40. This is actually technically one of the newer style Phillips, and it is compatible with Japanese screws as well. And in fact, these work quite well, these little Viha drivers. I'm trying to do this so you can actually see the screw coming out. It's kind of hard to get a grip on the driver that way, but okay, so it's out. Set that aside for safekeeping. And at this point, if I push on this, the whole thing should come apart. Okay, so now uh, the next step, now that everything is apart, is literally just to clean it up, put it back together. Um, this uh, outer barrel. 
inside this is basically a brass a piece of brass material and on the inside you can see the black the brass and what happens is uh, you get oil on there or people will oil these or sometimes immersion oil will get in there this is a dry objective so there should be no immersion oil anywhere near this thing but either oil got in there or just contaminants it's hard to say what this wasn't a really bad one so I don't think it really had oil in it as such but I think it did have some physical dirt dust something that worked its way into it over the years and uh, this inner barrel here going just a little bit closer uh, what we have to do is just basically clean this whole entire surface and basically this all needs to be scrupulously clean and this goes together without any oil any graphite nothing it's just brass on brass these little bearing surfaces here are a little bit proud of you can see these exposed brass surfaces here that are not plated that's just a little bit proud of this surface here and these bearing surfaces slide on this internal brass surface uh, brass uh, is one of the materials that is not very uh, not very likely to gall so the occasional sliding of brass on brass here without any oil in it all is totally acceptable because if you put any lubrication in there I don't care what kind it is you're going to be back to where we were before or worse I have here some acetone and a bunch of cotton swabs and uh, from this point all we have to do is clean all that out and get it really clean I do want to be a little bit careful not to get the acetone uh, on the exposed optics uh, a little a little bit wouldn't hurt it but if you get too much in there it can start to attack the the adhesives that hold it all together if I can get this little pump mechanism to work and get some acetone exposed finally okay so I'm gonna start by just cleaning this surface I will set this aside There's a little bit of stuff on there, but not a lot. So, as I said, this this particular uh, this particular objective was not real bad to begin with. So, I, I don't really expect a lot to come out. Sometimes on these, if you get one that's really gummed up, you'll get just yellow, lots, lots and lots of yellow oil coming out. And I want to make sure, since this thing sticks, one place to really focus on right inside this thing. There's a little a little step in the machining inside there. And so, what I want to do is I want to make sure there's nothing at all behind that step because that can contribute to a stickiness an initial stickiness that then breaks free and works okay so let's do this run it through one more time and just set it aside to dry and I can actually feel a little something on there so there might be just a little bit of a little bit of an oil residue or something Nothing that really is visible on the cotton swab. Okay, let's do that one more time. The clean swab. Because we do want this absolutely as clean as we can get it. Okay, that's that. This goes inside there, um, comes out from it, it extends to the bottom, so it has to go in through here. And as you can hear, that's a very close fit, so it doesn't take any kind of residue of much, much of a residue or anything to cause that to to gum up and not work properly. Right here is a little screw hole. And if we rotate this around, there's a little slot here, so that when that screw goes in it, it needs to go into that slot, and that's what that's what restrains this thing from moving further than it should. Okay. Now, if I take the uh, tiny little screw that goes in there. Put it in there. It looks like I got it lined up just properly. So now this now falls well. You know, if I turn it over, it falls under gravity. There is no stickiness whatsoever to it. So this is much better than it was. It would not have done that before. 
And now with this thing put together, very loose, moving properly, all we have to do is put the uh, spring in, put this field stop, do the, screw that back onto the base. At that point the mechanism will be spring loaded again. And the way I do that is I just, uh, by hand, tighten it down. Once I get that, I'll go ahead and use this little rubber pad and try to tighten it just a little bit more so it doesn't want to go anywhere. And at this point, that guy is working perfectly. There's no resistance whatsoever, and I think if I set this down and come back an hour from now and push on it, it'll feel exactly the same. Okay, now off camera, I took a little scrub brush and some Windex cleaner and took all the uh, dirt and debris, cleaned this up pretty well, so it's ready to go back onto the objective. There's no real trick to that other than just get, get it all lined up slide it on evenly, uh, making sure once again not to stretch it and uh, once you get it all in there it should drop into that slot you just, if you try to actually just push it on like that you'll be putting force inward and it'll be pretty stubborn so it's actually better if you just put the force from the ends inward without squeezing down on it and at that point it should go on easily Keep going around a little at a time so you don't stretch it till it's in there. And now it feels nice and snug. I mean, you can rotate it by the grip, it's not slipping. So I call that a success. This thing is ready to go. I'll, I'll give it one final cleaning on the tip before I close it all up. But I do want to show you one thing. This is loosely threaded onto here. And that feels nice and normal, but if you tighten this guy all the way down, you're uh, plugging up that air chamber. At that point, this thing is affected. Loosen it up a little bit. Tighten it down. So, uh, what I'm saying is, don't ever pick up one of these things screwed onto the base from the objective canister and fool yourself into thinking the tip needs work, when in reality, it may not. So if we put this guy back together, like I said, I'll clean that tip. But this thing is uh, ready to go back into service once it's been cleaned. And so thanks for tuning in. Catch you on the next one.